So recently I've been watching a lot of Yes Theory and one of their videos was about them going to see Wim Hof and learning about his method. So the video I watched was them going through the training programs that he sets up for people that want to learn about his breathing technique and learn to seek discomfort and go through the physical challenges that he sets up for his students. So during their visit to see Wim Hof, Wim Hof, as he does with no other students, introduced them to his breathing technique. What did get me interested was when yesterday we were filming themselves going through that process, the initial part of that exercise included a lot of hyperventilation. Then came a moment in the video when Matt was seen to be doing very strange patterns and movements with his hands, which seems very familiar to what I had recently learned in school. So this video is about me trying to explain why it is that Matt had these special or odd muscle spasm during that breathing exercise. I saw his hand was like, like a little bit like that. So I just started filming it and that was scary as fuck okay. too. <laughs> Hyperventilation is when you are breathing very quickly and heavily and that causes a lot of gaseous exchange in the lungs. Gaseous exchange removes carbon dioxide and also brings in oxygen. So carbon dioxide doesn't just exist only as carbon dioxide in the blood. It can regularly transform into carbonic acid with the help of water. And then carbonic acid can also uh, dissociate to form hydrogen ions as well as carbonate ions. Now hydrogen ions are the things that de determine whether our blood is acidic or alkaline. Because when we talk about something being acidic, we refer to pH. And what pH really is, is it really is just a measure of the concentration of these hydrogen ions in a specific um, volume of liquid. This transformation from carbon dioxide to carbonic acid to free hydrogen ions and carbonate ions is a reversible reaction. In chemistry, there is this principle called the Chatelier's principle. Le Chatelier's principle applies to reversible reactions. If I suddenly have a decrease in the left side of this equation, which is carbon dioxide, this would cause more of the carbonic acid to be converted into carbon dioxide. And when there is a decrease in this carbonic acid because it's being converted into carbon dioxide, the free hydrogen ions and the free carbonate ions will also react to form more carbonic acid. This works because there is a shift in the equilibrium where the system attempts to maintain all these different states in relative proportion to each other. This is a diagram of an alveolus, which is the, the smallest compartment inside the lungs where this gaseous exchange takes place. So when there is hyperventilation, carbon dioxide is being removed very quickly from the blood that surrounds these alveoli. This causes the concentration of carbon dioxide to drop inside the blood. When this happens, more carbonic acid will be converted to form more carbon dioxide and water, and more free hydrogen ions and bicarbonate ions will be converted into carbonic acid. Now in a normal blood vessel, you have blood that contains hydrogen ions. As I've said, the concentration of these hydrogen ions that dictates the acidity of the blood. And the normal pH of the blood is around 7.35 to 7.45. And it is when you have this decrease in the hydrogen ions due to the hyperventilation in the blood, that causes the blood pH to rise and become more alkaline. Normally, the pH is kept quite consistently within that range by the kidneys, which normally act to remove hydrogen ions from the blood and excrete it into the urine, as well as to reabsorb bicarbonate ions in the urine back into the blood, which is why our normal urine is also quite acidic as well. But because we are ventilating so quickly in such a short period of time, these kidneys are not able to adjust to the changes in hydrogen ions and bicarbonate ions so quickly. It normally takes a day or two for them to be able to correct any significant metabolic changes that have taken place, which is why this body now enters a state called respiratory alkalosis. Respiratory meaning that this process is, is related to ventilation and alkalosis because this blood is now more alkaline than it normally is. The next molecule that is important in this topic is calcium. Calcium can exist inside the blood in multiple different forms. It is mainly divided into ionized calcium. They are ionized and they have a charge. This calcium that is ionized is what is also referred to as free calcium and are not bound to any other uh, substances in the bloodstream. Whereas the non-ionized calcium is calcium that is bound either to albumin or to other proteins inside the blood. Two most important forms of calcium are free calcium, which are the ones that are ionized, and non-ionized calcium that is bound to albumin because those make up the majority of all calcium in the blood.
Now, albumin is a very important protein in the blood. It has many, many functions, one of which is to bind and hold a lot of different other substances that are present in the blood. And two of these are calcium and hydrogen ions. Um, normally, there is a certain proportion of calcium and a certain proportion of hydrogen ions that are bound to the albumin in the blood. But when there is alkalosis, these hydrogen ions that are bound to the albumin unbind from the albumin molecule and become free hydrogen ions in the blood in order to try bring the pH down because the pH is dependent on the amount of free hydrogen ions in the blood. And when this happens, albumin now has freed up space that allows it to take up free calcium and when it binds to it, it now becomes non-ionized calcium that is bound to the albumin. Although there are no changes in the total amount of calcium, this reduction in the free calcium start to have effects that are similar to a condition, a state where people refer to as hypocalcemia. This is slightly confusing because hypocalcemia is normally referring to a reduction in the amount of calcium in the blood, which this is not an example of. But because free calcium is the actual calcium that is used um, by the body for a lot of metabolic processes, this reduction in free calcium will also have the same problems and the complications as hypocalcemia. One of the functions of free calcium is to help stabilize a lot of the sodium channels that are present on nerves that connect to muscles. And when there is a reduction in this free calcium, these sodium channels are very unstable and are able to depolarize very easily. Depolarize also means activating and sending a signal down the nerve. Now this causes a phenomenon called tetany, which people often confuse with tetanus. Tetanus is caused by an infection by a bacteria called Clostridium tetany, which is a fatal disease due to uncontrolled muscle contraction. Whereas tetany is also an uncontrolled contraction of the muscles, but it is due to metabolic disturbances, most commonly hypocalcemia. It is when you have hypocalcemia leading to these nerves and neurons firing these signals down to the muscles uncontrollably and causing these muscles to start to spasm. One of the most common presentations of these muscle spasms when you, is known as the carpal pedal spasm. The carpal pedal spasm is characterized by what is known as a flexion of the metacarpals, which is around where the knuckles are, and an adduction of the thumb, which means the thumb is brought inwards towards the hand. And this is where I made the link for yesterday's video because Matt, was, Matt himself was a bit freaked out with why he had this strange hand movement. And if I'm not wrong, I think it is because he was hyperventilating during the exercise, which leads to the hypocalcemia and eventually led to his carpal pedal spasm. Women also warned they might start feeling a bit of numbness or a bit of lightheadedness. You feel lightheaded, loose in the body, tingling. It's all all right. Breathe into it. This, I think, is also due to hypocalcemia, which can also cause problems with the sensory nerves and cause a lot of numbness, as well as have effects in the brain where it can cause seizures and a lot of convulsions as well. This carpal pedal sign is also very commonly seen in people with anxiety attacks because when they have anxiety attacks, there is often a lot of hyperventilation going on as well. Now, the reason why yesterday we were able to recover quickly from the spasm was because they stopped breathing um, in the latter part of the exercise. And when you stop breathing, you have less oxygen coming in and you have cells undergoing anaerobic respiration because you are not bringing in more oxygen. And this anaerobic respiration produces lactic acid, helps bring the pH in the blood back down. So that's about it for this video. I just thought it would be interesting to answer Matt's question as to why he had that spasm in his hand. Um, hypocalcemia is actually very dangerous where you can have uh, where these seizures can have a lot of complications as well as other problems where hypocalcemia can cause your heart to pump very irregularly which can cause um, death as well so it's not something that it should be taken lightly but that is about it for this video so thank you for watching and um, i'll see you next time